Hi everyone, my name's John and welcome to my first video on cheese making. Whether you're interested in having a go at cheese making yourself or you're here just to watch the video, either way I'll share with you everything I've learned so far from the equipment needed right up to the final step of aging the cheese. And here's a list of ingredients for today's cheese recipe. OK, let's start by looking at all the equipment we need to make our first cheese. Which, by the way, is a delicious cheese called Cotswold. Right, first items we need are cheesecloth, paper hand towels and rubber gloves. Next on the list is a strainer or colander. Also, we need cheese or sushi mats. Then we move on to a spray bottle filled with white vinegar. We also need measuring spoons and cups. Now we move up to cheese mould, thermometer, timer and my homemade cheese press. I'll explain how the press works later in the video. Next is the curd cutter, stainless steel slotted spoon and whisk. And finally we move on to my large double boiler setup. Right, with that out the way, let's get started. OK then, the very first important step in making cheese is to sterilise all the equipment thoroughly including the main pot and the best way to do this is to put everything in the pot and boil the whole lot for 15 minutes. Anything that won't fit in the pot can be washed using a detergent then sanitised with a mild bleach solution or with some other sanitising product. Worktops and sinks must also be germ free. Once everything is cleaned I use a spray bottle filled with white vinegar which is mainly used to kill mould. So I've put in the cheesecloths and the cheese mat, the curd cutter, stirring utensils. Notice I didn't put the thermometer all the way in, just the probe part, because I'm not sure if the boiling water would damage the display gauge. So I let that simmer away for about 15 minutes and I'll see you shortly when we can get started on the cheese making. OK, we can actually start making some cheese now. First job is to set up the double boiler. I use a 24 point heavy duty stainless steel pan, ideal for this purpose. First we add two imperial gallons of whole or full cream milk. That's 10 litres or 16 pints. I'm using store-bought pasteurised cow's milk. Don't use ultra pasteurised, it doesn't work in cheese making. And because it's store-bought processed milk, we need to add half a teaspoon of calcium chloride. If you're lucky enough to have access to fresh farm milk, just skip the calcium chloride step. Now we need to bring the milk up to a temperature of 32 degrees Celsius, that's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the water pan is boiling, it only takes a few minutes to reach the temperature, so keep a close eye on the thermometer. Once the temperature is reached, take it off the double boiler. The temperature will hold for quite a long time. OK, here we go with the first ingredient. This is called a mesophilic type 2 starter culture and this is a mixture of milk bacteria and its purpose is to make the milk more acidic which helps along with the rennet form good curds and also adds some flavour to the cheese. So we add a quarter of a teaspoon and sprinkle it over the top of the milk, let it sit for a minute to rehydrate. Then stir thoroughly for one minute. Put the lid on and let it go to work for 45 minutes. Right, 45 minutes have passed pretty quickly. Next we add three more ingredients. 
first of which is five drops of a nautil colouring, diluted in a quarter of a cup of unchlorinated water. You can just use shop bought bottled water for this. But don't use ordinary tap water because more than likely that has chlorine in it and that will kill the good bacteria in the milk. Just pour it into the milk, give it a good stir just to make sure it's evenly mixed. And the next ingredient is the half teaspoon of calcium chloride, diluted in a quarter of a cup of unchlorinated water. We're basically putting back enzymes what the pasteurising process has taken out. And like I said earlier, you don't need to use this if you're using fresh farm milk. So, we'll give that a good stir. Make sure it's mixed all the way through the milk. By the way, did I mention there's a lot of stirring involved in cheese making? And the next step is adding the half teaspoon of rennet, also diluted in a quarter of a cup of unchlorinated water. This is the enzyme that causes the milk to coagulate and help form a strong curd. It's recommended in the recipe to get the milk moving and then add the rennet while stirring. Once the rennet's in, stir for a good two minutes. Then stick the lid on and leave it for 45 minutes and we'll come back after the 45 minutes and check to see if it's set. Ok, the 45 minutes have passed and now we can test if the milk is set. I do this by dipping in the end of my curd cutter to see if the knife comes out clean. This is also known as a clean break. Some people will use their little finger to do this test. In this case, the milk has set, but if it hadn't, just put the lid back on and give it a little more time. Now we start to cut the curds. Just dip the knife in and draw it straight back and make a cut about every half inch. I've sped up the video because it does take quite a while to do this. Try to keep the cuts as evenly as possible. Once we get all the way across I turn the pot around 45 degrees and do the same cuts making small half inch squares. Once the vertical cuts are done, and then we'll do three or four horizontal cuts. But it's not critical as we're going to make the curds even smaller by using a whisk a little later. Now we need to let the curds heal for five minutes. Okay, after the curds have rested for 5 minutes, we now start to stir the curds for 30 minutes. Still maintaining the temperature of 32 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll reset your timer for 30 minutes and we'll get started on the first stir. We start by using the whisk to cut the curd down to smaller pieces by very gently pulling the whisk through the curd a few times until you get the curd down to about quarter inch pieces. This will take a few minutes but don't rush this step because the curds are still pretty fragile and you need to be very gentle at this stage. I'll speed this part up a bit 
because it does take quite a while. At this point we can change to a slotted spoon and start once again gently stirring the curds for the remainder of the 30 minutes. If you see any large pieces just cut them with the spoon. You can put the thermometer back in at this stage just to keep an eye on the temperature. Right, as we approach the end of the first 30 minute stir, this is what the curds look like. They have toughened up a bit and we don't have to be so gentle with the stirring. The next stage is bringing the temperature slowly up to 40 degrees Celsius, that's 104 Fahrenheit, but you have to do this gradually over 45 minutes while stirring continuously. So back on the double boiler with a low heat and we'll slowly bring the temperature up to 40 degrees Celsius. Right, skipping ahead a little, this is what the curds look like with only 18 minutes to go. The temperature is at 38 so we're on course to reach that 40 Celsius at the end of the 45 minutes. If you think the temperature is rising too quickly turn off the heat under the boiler or if it's rising too slowly turn the heat up a little. Ok, we're just about at the end of this 45 minute stir and the temperature has been spot on throughout, rising steadily over the correct time period. This is what the curds look like at this stage. They look a bit like worn shiny pebbles on a beach. Right, we're finally at the last stage. We need to hold that temperature of 40 Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit, for a further 30 minutes, but only stirring once every two to three minutes, just to stop the curds from matting together. In the meantime, we can get our colander and cheesecloth ready in the sink to separate the curds from the whey. I like this stainless steel colander because of the extending support arms. It's ideal for placing over a sink. So I place the cheesecloth in the colander. I like to pour boiling water over it about a couple of minutes before pouring the curds just to take the chill off it a bit. Ok, that's the last 30 minute stage complete. Now we can strain the curds through the cheesecloth and the colander. You could save the weight at this stage if you like. It's good for baking and you know, boiling vegetables. But I've got plenty in the fridge so this lot's going down the sink today. I'll just grab a spatula to get that last bit out. Please excuse the bottom of my pot, I couldn't do it left handed. Now what we do is just let that drain until it stops dripping. It takes about 45 minutes. Now we can get the bowl ready for milling the curd. But before we start, a quick word on hygiene. Some of you may have noticed the scratches on my right hand. I got these the day before from an attack by a huge cat. I managed to get some footage of the attack. You can see how lucky I was to escape with my life. On a more serious note, if you have any cuts or scratches, wear rubber gloves. I took the other precaution of spraying white vinegar on my hands too.
OK, the dripping has stopped, so it's time to mill the curd mass, which simply means break it into small pieces. It looks and feels a bit like scrambled eggs at this point. It breaks up quite easily, but take your time with it and slowly nibble away at the curd. I'll speed up the video so we can move along to the next step of adding the three ingredients. That is salt, dried onion powder and chives. Right, the first ingredient to add is the two tablespoons of salt. You can use cheese salt, but I use the non-iodized kosher salt because it works out cheaper and it does the same job. Don't use ordinary table salt, it contains iodine and it'll ruin your cheese. So add half the salt first, mix that in then add the other half and give it a good mixing. Try and do this as gently as possible. And now it's time to add the dried onion powder. I actually make my own dried onions, but you can buy it quite easily. Believe it or not, there's a whole medium sized onion going in there. That means there's plenty of flavour. And the final ingredient is the dried chives. Ok that's all the mixing out of the way, now we can start on the pressing. But first a quick explanation on how my homemade press works. I made it out of two polyethylene chopping boards. The wooden blocks are different sizes calibrated to varying pressures on the compression spring. I'm using the 50 pound blocks in a demo with a couple of tea towels representing the cheese in the mould. When I screw it down and the top press reaches the block I know there's 50 pounds of pressure on the spring and that pressure is then transferred to the cheese. Simple. It's very accurate and it works brilliantly. OK now we can start pressing the curds. This recipe calls for four pressings. The first is 10 pounds of pressure for 15 minutes. The second is 20 pounds for 10 minutes. The third 40 pounds for two hours. And the final press is £50 for 24 hours. Right, the first job is to line the mould with the cheesecloth and start filling it up. I think I should have used a slightly bigger mould but I think it will work.
OK, the curds are in the mould and we're ready to press the cheese. The yellow disc, by the way, is called the follower. So all we have to do is assemble the press, put in the £10 blocks, screw it down and leave it for 15 minutes. And I'll be back when the 15 minutes is up. Right, the 15 minutes have passed and now we need to take the cheese out and turn it round, put it back in the press with 20 pounds of pressure for 10 minutes. Then repeat the process again using 40 pounds of pressure for 2 hours and then once again for the final press take it out, turn it round and then press it for 24 hours using the 50 pound pressure. I'll speed through the video and I'll see you at that point. One last point here, be very careful when turning the cheese over at this stage. As you can see it's pretty fragile, but after the second pressing it gets a lot easier to handle. I forgot to mention at this point, I don't have a £40 block, so what I did was put in the £50 block, but I didn't screw it all the way down. I left a small gap, so it won't have been far off the £40 mark. Right, it's now 24 hours later and we can take the cheese out of the mould for the last time. There's a couple of marks on it from the cheesecloth but that doesn't matter. 
once you get the cheese coat in and the wax on it you won't see any of that the chives seem to be evenly spread throughout and it looks great an amazing transformation when you think about it 10 litres of milk into 1.2 kilograms of beautiful Cotswold cheese okay thanks for watching my first video on cheese making I hope you come back to see how I put the cheese coating and the wax on the cheese and also go through some of the aging rules so for now goodbye and thanks again for watching <laughs>